Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about yet another discovery of an organic molecule that's part of life, but this time discovered in space, far far away from planet Earth. Something that was really mysterious and unusual a few decades ago, but something that apparently is not a big deal anymore, because we've found so many over the past few years. But this time this molecule is really important, because that particular molecule plays an essential role in developing the cells in our body. It's part of the cell membrane. A molecule that sort of looks like this, and is known as ETA or ethanolamine, one of many organic molecules that's absolutely essential for all life on Earth. But unlike some of the previous discoveries of various organic molecules, this one was found in the middle of a distant molecular cloud approximately 100,000 light years away from planet Earth. And because of this particular discovery and also a lot of other organic molecules that were discovered over the past few years, I figured it's important to put all of this together in order to help you understand why these are actually very important findings. And I guess let's start right here, you can find this link in the description below. There's already an entire list of various organic molecules and a lot of really complex molecules that have been already found around various asteroids, around various types of molecular clouds, or essentially just in outer space, outside of our own planet. And because a lot of those molecules are generally connected to life in some way or another, or are even basically responsible for forming life as we know it, discovering them in outer space in various clouds or around various asteroids directly helps us understand how common life could be out there and how likely life could form around some other object somewhere not so far away from us. But because a lot of these discoveries are more or less recent, from the last decade or so, we're still kind of early on in trying to understand all of this and then trying to sort of piece the picture together. One thing that doesn't surprise the scientists anymore though is just discovering all of these molecules out there. They've already discovered various types of amino acids, so things that produce proteins and your DNA, and they've already discovered a lot of other components, smaller components, that normally build bigger things inside of our bodies. And because of this, the idea of finding extraterrestrial life out there is becoming more and more of a reality as opposed to just being a science fiction. But the problem here is that despite discovering various organic molecules out there, and despite finding so many different elements, even around our asteroids or in other star systems, it's still not really clear to anyone how all of this can sort of form complex life. In simpler terms, it's as if we're basically finding all of these Lego pieces flying around space, and we are the Lego people living in our Legoland here on planet Earth. But right now we're trying to understand if a similar Legoland can form somewhere else out there on another planet. And most scientists believe that it's possible, but the actual mechanism is not really well understood. But this recent discovery might take us a tiny step closer. So first of all, this was discovered in a molecular cloud that usually ends up producing various stars after a few million years if it collides with another similar cloud. And inside of this cloud, the scientists have identified really, really huge amounts of these organic molecules. Now, because of this, they realize that there's gotta be something going on in the clouds themselves. They must be responsible for forming these molecules. And as a matter of fact, in their study, they go even further. They establish the fact that it's much easier for these molecules to form inside these unusual clouds. They sort of refer to this phenomenon as dark chemistry. So now they believe that a lot of these chemical processes that essentially form these complex organic molecules must be happening around the molecular clouds first, where they essentially coalesce around tiny particles and start forming larger and larger structures, with some of these formations being relatively complex, something that probably happens on Earth as well, but the question here is, did it actually start on Earth or did it first happen somewhere in outer space? So in other words, one of the questions here is, so that stuff we are made out of, did it actually come from outer space first and then was sort of combined into more complex stuff on the planet, or did our planet originally created these Lego pieces? And at the moment, all of the signs suggest to the former. Pretty much all of the signs suggest to us that many of these molecules, many of these organic complex molecules were first produced in outer space. And specifically, they were very likely produced in these molecular clouds. And so all of these tiny Lego pieces were already developed when the molecular cloud from which our solar system was made was still around and was about to start producing stars. Then a few million and possibly a billion years later, 
All of these molecules start to coalesce into larger objects, into asteroids, into dwarf planets, and eventually produced actual planets like Earth. But all of these pieces were already there, they were already created, and very likely then started to combine into something more complex on the surface. Which of course implies that very similar processes could definitely happen around some other planet, somewhere out there in our own galaxy, in some other galaxy, or possibly even very very close to us, as long as these similar conditions to planet Earth are provided. And that's kind of what the scientists believe right now. Now, in terms of this molecule, what exactly does it do and why is it so important? Well, the easiest way to understand how important this molecule is for life, it's to look at our cells, or really any cells out there. Every single cell out there is made out of the so-called phospholipid bilayer. It's this layer that you see right here, and if you were to zoom in in here, you would see a series of organic molecules that form these unusual shapes, with the head itself sticking out to the outside, and the tails sticking onto the inside. But if you were to look at this head a little bit closer, you would discover that it contains this molecule that I previously showed you. And this can actually be different depending on the cell and depending on a lot of other parameters, but this is one of the more common molecules that is usually used in those heads. But because this was discovered in this molecular cloud whose name you see right here, and because large amounts of it was discovered in that particular cloud, now the scientists really want to find out if it's kind of common to other clouds as well, or if it's really only some clouds that are lucky enough to produce just the right mixture of these molecules to then kickstart life. But this discovery definitely suggests that this molecule can easily be formed in space, and these clouds can contribute to the assembly of these molecules very early in the existence of the star system. And then all of these molecules would be delivered to growing planets, with possibly some planets getting just the right mixture of these early molecules to then kickstart life. Now that part is still not really well understood. As a matter of fact, we're probably still decades away from figuring any of this out. Nobody really knows what kind of kickstarts life. As a matter of fact, nobody's ever been able to create life from just molecules. The complex molecules were definitely created, but what happens afterwards? How do we turn those complex molecules into a functioning cell with DNA with everything else? And so that's kind of what the scientists are trying to answer by looking for these molecules out there and hopefully one day discovering some other planet with actual functioning life on the surface. But I guess one of the more important discoveries out of this paper is that the scientists were definitively able to show that these really slow collisions inside various molecular clouds can effectively produce these organic molecules that can then hypothetically produce life. The concept they refer to as the dark chemistry. And more importantly, they showed that the chemistry itself seems to be a lot more efficient in these clouds compared to even a surface of a typical planet. The assembly conditions to form these complex molecules are perfect in these environments. And so, hypothetically, every single molecule responsible for a production of a typical cell could form in these dark chemistry conditions. And then on the other hand, they also discovered that a lot of the molecules we've been finding in various asteroids, and here we're of course talking about complex organic molecules relevant to life, also very likely did not come from the asteroids themselves and were most likely formed before the solar system. And so a lot of stuff we find in these asteroids is very likely billions of years old, formed inside the original molecular cloud from which our sun was formed as well. Which of course means that what you're looking at right here is like a factory of primordial life material. This is where very likely a lot of the organic molecules originally came from. Which of course implies that it can happen anywhere else in the universe at any point. But until we find life somewhere out there, for example on one of the moons of Saturn or Jupiter, we're not really going to get far in answering these questions. It's still super unclear how all of this is done and how the variety of organic molecules lead to the complex life we have on planet Earth. It's quite likely that a much more dense environment with a lot of liquid like water is required to do all of this, and to start forming more and more complex molecules with a lot of complex chemical reactions, but at this point, well, it's just a guess, nobody really knows. We might know one day, but not anytime soon. Well, anyway, on that note, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.